Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, on tonight's, uh, well, on today's episode, um, I just want to have a bit of a chat with you guys about the D22 in general. Uh, what this is going to be is a bit of a review of ownership. Uh, I was this was this one was another one that was requested as well. I'm kind of just bumping out requests at the moment. But um, yeah, someone suggested to do a review of ownership. I figured I've had a D22 for pretty well five years. I've had this one for three. Um, so why not? And because I'm useless, and you guys know I'm useless, I'm, I've got a run sheet here. Uh, otherwise, this will get so sidetracked. Uh, it's not even funny. But there is still stuff off here that I know is going to like pop into my head at like the very last minute as I'm going through this. So it still may be a little bit scrappy and all over the place, but just bear with me. So basically, I've had this car for three years. Um, like I said, I had another D22 for two years before that. I've actually had this for over three years. And I've kind of immersed myself in, in the car itself and um, and, the, and the D22 pages and whatnot. So I, 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 I spend a lot of time working on this thing, looking for parts for this thing, um, upgrades and whatnot, and, and just general reading. Um, so let's start with the D D22 itself. Now you've got two models. You've got the ZD30 and the YD25. Now the ZD30 is the older of the two. It is the three liter, not intercooled uh, model. And then they gave it, uh, then they gave it a new engine and they really only had a couple of, uh, only a real, just a, just a, like a pinch of, just a few. Uh, that took me forever to say that. It, they only had like a handful of small cosmetic differences. Um, obviously the bonnet scoop being one, uh, shorter tub, different color dash, small stuff like that. Uh, they gave it a 2.5 liter intercooled engine. So uh, that actually came with less power from factory than the predecessor, than the older one, um, which makes no sense, but go figure that in this. And, Anyway, so I think this one from factory pulls about 98, which is garbage. <laughs> I'm not pulling 98. Uh, even with all the mods on this thing, I'd be surprised if I'd, I'd be as happy as a, as a pig in shit if I was even getting 80. Uh, but the ZD30 came out with 110, which 12, 12 kilowatts. That's, that's a big difference to, to step down that much. But anyway, they did it. Like I said, um, the cars shared pretty well most body parts, ball bars, underbody bash plates. Um, suspension, uh, even even some snorkels. I'm pretty sure most snorkels are all the same. The the main differences were the engine. Uh, I'm quite sure there would be a different. There is that have to be a different transmission. I've never looked into it, but there would have to be a different transmission to cope with the different engine. Other than that, most of them are pretty well the same. They look very similar. Uh, there were there were not a lot of changes that happened. So after having one of these, well, well, for having this one for three years, things that have actually gone wrong have been really minimal, really, really minimal for these cars. Um, I had nothing go wrong on the first one, um, but this one here, all that we've had that has gone wrong was a cracked exhaust manifold, and we had a leaky intercooler, and I've had to replace a drag link. Uh, I want to be really clear when I say that most of, like, like obviously I do maintenance videos as part of the channel, but everything that I've done has been an upgrade and not a fix. So the only thing that I've actually had to fix was the drag link, uh, the inner cooler, and the exhaust manifold. So three things. Now, uh, you can expect your drag link to wear out on any four-wheel drive. Inner cooler, uh, they're crimped on end, so that, that sucks anyway. It kind of expands and shrinks down with, with fluctuating heat temperatures, things like that. And after a while, they wear out. So as a result, it was kind of spewing out garbage. Anyway, so I replaced that. I got a Forefront Industries welded. Uh, it's got a bigger tank and it's it's welded on the ends so you're not getting stuff escaping. The inner core and of course the exhaust manifold. Now the exhaust manifold would have been a lot easier to diagnose if I didn't have my heat shield on. Um, my heat shield was on so I couldn't see. I, I It actually took it took quite a while for me to diagnose it. I don't know how but I should have gotten up. I, I didn't get underneath, so I got underneath, had a look, there's black stuff everywhere. The boys in the Navarra page pointed me towards the exhaust manifold, which was great. Uh, that's a great page. If you've got one of these cars, or if you're looking at buying one of these cars, jump into the Aussie four-wheel drive Navarra D22 group chat. There is a plethora of information on that page uh, that is invaluable to you if you are a home DIY mechanic, if you own one of these cars and go camping a lot, uh, just for general knowledge of how things work and, and certain issues that these cars have, uh, or just if you are looking to, to buy one, chuck a post up, or just, 
even better, se search the search the, the posts that have already been done and, and check out the information that's been left on those posts so that you can have a look, uh, you know, not just this review, but have a look at everyone's opinions on them because they do differ. But essentially, those are kind of the three only issues that I've actually had with it. Um, like I said, everything else has been an upgrade, which is great. I've got mates that are replacing bits and pieces here, there, and everywhere that are, you know, pieces are wearing out, but everything, I'm very lucky that everything that I seem to do seems to be an upgrade and not a, not a replacement, so. Now I can tell you how much I love this car for, for forever. Um, they're not the best car out there. By no means are they the best car out there. That's not what I'm saying, but I really like them. I think they have character. Um, and I think they're a good reliable car, but that's not to say that they don't have their cons. So let's start with the cons and let's have a chat about things that they possibly could have done better or just general sucky things about this car in general. And number one, coming in right at the top is, uh, and I've, I mentioned this beforehand, why is it more underpowered than the predecessor? 98 kilowatts, this thing is a potato an absolute potato and it's you know this potato has character and i love this potato but it's a potato like 98 kilowatts i, I from what i've seen it is the most underpowered car of its class uh, and it really didn't even come close to a lot of other competitors which just blows my mind a little bit but i, I don't know how nissan thought that it was acceptable to be throwing at a car with 98 kilowatts from factory in 2015 like, mind blown. Why? But that being said, they were also being marketed as... I don't, I don't think they were being marketed as the like the big workhorse 4x4 Tourer. I think they were being marketed as a light sports utility. And I think for what you pay, and I think that's what you get. Uh, you're not getting the you're not getting the, the bigger... Well, I was going to say bigger, bigger D40 motor, but it's still a 2.5 litre engine. But you have got bigger injectors, bigger turbo, and all that kind of nonsense. So, but yeah, look, 98 kilowatts, there's not a lot you can do with that. I'm lucky I don't tow. I did tow. Uh, that being said, you know, this thing, I, not this particular one, my old one, uh, we went screaming up the beach, Fraser Isle, and two-ton camper on the back, no worries. So, it'll tow what you want it to tow, um, most of the time, up to 2.8 ton. But, you know, are there better towing cars out there? Probably anything is a better towing car, realistically. If you're towing, you know, big trailers, race car trailers, car trailers, big go-kart trailers. Uh, this thing hates the band trailer. It absolutely hates it. Uh, I did a big ass trailer though. But yeah, you know, I think there are, I'm not saying you shouldn't buy this car. I'm saying you should weigh up a couple of different things and just see if there are, an, there's another car that's going to suit your needs better. Now, these were designed with like, they, they just, I know they put back seats in the dual cabs, but I don't know why. There's no room back there and you'd hate to be a passenger back there. Uh, thankfully, I'm never a passenger in my own car, so it's <laughs> not my problem. But if, you know, again, there's no leg room in there. Even in terms of leg room in the front, like I'm pretty well outstretched as far as I can. Like my seat won't go any further back. And I'm about 185, so if you're any taller than me, you really need to be test driving one of these cars first to see that you're going to actually physically fit in the car. Someone's doing skids. Uh, there's no leg room. There's not even leg room in the front, really, if you're an overly tall guy. So if you're an average guy, like I said, 185, I'd call that about average. But I would say you need to be checking that the car's actually comfortable for you. And like I said, if you've got three kids in the back and you have to have your seat all, you know, reclined all the way back, your kids are gonna hate you and the car. Uh, creature comforts. Um, there's none. They're a really basic interior. The setup is really, really simple. Uh, it's very truck-like. Uh, it's not truck-like, but it's very, yeah, it's just very basic. And I actually love that. Like, I, I really enjoy the simplicity of it. Like, it's just a really boring, not in a face, but it's just a really boring console. Really simple. I didn't want fancy stuff because it gets muddy and it gets dirty and it gets dusty, uh, given what I do. Um, that being said, they could have done a nicer dash, like, cluster. Da they could have just done a nicer dash. That's not really creature comfort either, but uh, cup holders, these things have the worst cup holders known to man. Um, that being said, I don't, I don't hate them, but it's still a dumb spot for cup holders. Not a huge deal. I've, I put water bottles in there. I never reach in there for CDs because I use my Bluetooth anyway. That brings me back to the CD player. It's actually a good CD player. Uh, I have the S5, which I think a lot of them are the S5. But it has like a it has like a six CD a five or six CD stacker 
set up in there. Uh, the Bluetooth connects really easily, but it's actually a really good head unit. So the only reason I'm going to replace it is because I want a subwoofer and it doesn't have the output for the sub. In terms of working on the car, like there's no there's no room in the grommet. It's a really small grommet from the factory and it sucks. Like I was working on my cousin's, uh, he's got a Bravo 2006 Bravo and that thing has a grommet like this big and it's great. You can poke so much crap through that and you can put so many accessories through. I've, I've had to drill like two other holes just to get crap through the firewall which is really frustrating but the common issues that the car has you've got your exhaust manifold that is a common issue with this car there are a couple of upgrades you can get you can get the well, you can buy your factory one which is the only one which actually retains the EGR uh, FYI or you can get one from advanced headers in Adelaide or you can do one from in-house fab in-house fab do a really pretty one uh, but it costs a little bit more. And it's not an overly complicated thing to, th to fix. I made it look a little harder than what it was in the video. It really wasn't as hard as what I made it out to be. Uh, it's basically, it's just, it's just fiddly because you arms into the engine bay and it's, it's just awkward more than anything. Lastly, uh, with the cons, these are one of the most highly shat on cars in the industry. Look, you know, they're a little 2.5 litre engine, 98 kilowatts from stock. If you're rocking up, you know, and it's probably more of a younger audience that I'm, that I'm thinking about. If you've got that, you've got that 4x4 rivalry, which is healthy. Rivalry can be healthy and it should be healthy, but it can be unhealthy. People hate these cars. People have a vendetta against them and I can't understand why. But anyway, so pretty well, just take no notice of them. They don't know what they're talking about. These things are pretty good for what they are. So just quickly as well, um, you're looking at about 4.3 litres of oil for a service. Um, so in terms of running costs, you're looking at one about $120 for your average service. That is for oil, that is for your fuel filter, oil filter, and air filter, and your sump plug. You're looking at about $120. Uh, if you can get that cheaper if it's all on special, uh, they're not an expensive car to service, really. Uh, they're, they're pretty good in terms of cost. In terms of how much they cost and how, how economic they are on fuel, like, that fluctuates with the, uh, with the, the prices of fuel. Uh, which, by the way, bring back COVID-19 fuel prices. It's gone, it's gone back up. It sucks out here. Uh, what else have I got on my list? Uh, how many kilometres I get to a tank? No idea. Not a clue. I've never measured it. I've never calibrated my EDS to actually tell me. One of those things that I really should be getting around to, but I just never got there. And so, let's do some pros. To start off with, the price for these things is much lower than what you would pay for an equivalent full drive in a lot of other models. Um, and probably because they're so basic and, and and there's not a lot to them. Like I said, there's no creature, or there's very little creature comforts and things like that. But you pay a lot less for them. And I've always found them to be very reliable. So this has never left me on the side of the road, uh, which is great. It's been through mud, it's been through hell, uh, sand, salt, it's been great. No issues, or at least no issues that have left me stranded and unable to get somewhere. Parts for these cars are really cheap. Um, aftermarket parts, genuine parts, upgrades, just general replacements here, there and everywhere, servicing parts. It's all really cheap. Um, like it's not overly, overly cheap. Like it's not, you're not gonna get an oil filter for $3, but I would say they're at least an average, if not a fraction below average for most parts. There will always be random parts that will cost a little bit more, um, but I have found that, all, like I said, all the general servicing parts, um, bash plates, you can pick up a bash plate for one of these things for like 160 bucks. Might have a couple of fitting issues, I did, but that thing is, that thing would, would, would blow up a tank, my, my bash plate. For me, this car is comfortable. I've had a two inch, two inch suspension lift pretty well from the get go. The second I got it, uh, it was the first thing I did was lift tires and rims. So it's always been comfortable. I have a 300 kilogram rated setup in the back. Uh, I now have extra bits in here. I now have an extra inch of lift, which is making it a little uncomfortable now that I've taken everything out of the back end of the tub as I prepare for a tray. Um, so it's rough now. Not gonna lie, it's still my back in a little bit, but before that, it's always been a really comfortable setup and I've always really liked it. Um, I do have a crook back, uh, kinda sucks. Uh, I'm a 22 year old with an 80 year old's back, but I've never had too much of an issue. You get the right spot in the chair and you just never move it. Uh, it's, been a good, it's been a good comfortable car, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. You put weight in the car and the car is actually quite smooth. Uh, they actually seem to seem to handle weight on the tow ball really well, and like I said, that is attributed to my suspension kit. But you know, my other one did not have a suspension kit. It did have a big heavy steel tray though, and it was just as comfortable as well. 
One of the biggest things for me with the D22s is they are so basic, and that's why you get you know 98 you know kilowatts of, of pure potato power. Uh, they are so basic. Uh, everything in, uh, in particular, your servicing. If you you know most people probably aren't going to the extent that I'm going to in terms of modifications. They just want to know is the car any good. Uh, and you know they might do their own filter changes and things like that. In terms of your filters, they're all in really accessible spots. They're very easy to work on. Your airbox is really simple. Your fuel filter is really simple, and your oil filter is really easy to get to. You just need the right tool to get in. But really, like I said, they're very easy to service. They're very easy to work on, and I think that's an important part of having a four-wheel drive and modding it. You know, if the cars are bastard to work on. That sucks for you, and I have found that these cars are really, really simple and basic to work on. Everything's in an accessible spot. I have I have looked at some engines and gone, what the hell were you thinking? Uh, where engineers have just had absolutely no intent on ever working on the car they designed, uh, and they've just got stuff in the weirdest, most awkward places. So, in terms of this car and how that goes, I give it a tick. And probably lastly, to finish off this sec uh, this sec section, is uh, yeah they are they are pretty underrated. Uh, like I said, it comes back to them being like a, such a shat on car in the industry. But I really like them. Uh, this thing has taken me to some pretty pretty cool places, uh, and there's heaps more to come. So yeah, you know I really don't see an issue with these cars. Um, you, you see it so often, people whinging and bitching about them, but. You know, you, you service it, you service anything, you look after it every 5,000 kilometers. Um, change your filters, change this, change that, change your oil. You know, like if you treat a car like trash, it's going to treat you like trash and it's going to leave you stranded. So I've always looked after my car, I'm a big believer, and I know that you do get lemons, but, you know, I'm a, such a huge believer in just look after your car and it'll look after you. So this has gone quite a while longer than what I was actually intending it to. Um, but... <laughs> uh, general thoughts on the car, like overall thoughts and recommendations. This comes now. I, I want to remind everyone that, like I said, if you're towing big loads, consider other cars. Don't have this your only option. These aren't the best tow cars. They will tow, but they're not the best on power, and you need to take that into consideration. They are basic, and I've never had an engine code, but but I've gone through water, mud. Oh, my alternator's still running fine too, given all the mud it's gone through. Um, you know, I've never had an engine code, I had an ABS cable that was just a really well placed stick that couldn't have been avoided. Um, but they're a reliable car, you need to look after it, you need to service it, and you need to maintain it properly if you expect it to continue to be a good car for you. There's a great aftermarket parts range available for these cars. Um, like I said, it comes down to ball bar, suspension, you know, kind of like further suspension kits above two inches. Yeah, exhausts, turbos, that's probably the one thing there's not a lot of turbos. Uh, MMP do a pretty, pretty sick looking turbo setup for the E22s, but it costs your left nut. Uh, there's a couple that do upgraded turbo, high flow turbos and whatnot, but I would be iffy about putting quite a few of them on my car as they all seem to be budget orientated and I'm not really for a budget turbo. That's a pretty integral part of the car and if it goes wrong, it can have some pretty shitty repercussions. So I'm not really for a budget turbo setup. But that's about the only thing that I've actually struggled to find parts for for this car. Um, like I said, everything, everything is, there's heaps of parts easily available. Wreckers always have like six of these things lying in, in the wrecking yard. They're a very common car. Uh, they were a very popular car for a time, so there's a lot of them around, there's a lot of them in the wrecking yards, there's a lot of parts available for them, which is great, that's great for you and for me, who need to buy parts for these cars, or need to know certain things about them. They're cheap to run, they're cheap to repair, um, I think that's a big part of, of, you know, no one wants, you know, I think Rego's about 800, I'm in Queensland, Rego's about $800 a year, 400 per 6 month. You know, not the greatest, but not the worst. Um, that varies state by state. I know, I think we here in Queensland are getting pretty, pretty well shafted. And like I said, repairs, you know, one, it's it's an easy car to, to work on repair and parts are always cheap. I'm going to recommend this car for people who are new to four-wheel driving, for people who are camping, for people who just want to get out and about, and for people who aren't going to be doing a lot of heavy four-wheel drive work. That last one... If you're not doing a lot of, you know, if, if you are intending on doing a lot of full drive work, then you need to look at modifying the car to suit. So, 
But realistically, like I said, if you're just wanting to get out and about camping, that's all I wanted to do when I bought the, my first one. I just wanted to be able to go out, put a swag in the back of the ute, a uh, bit of camping gear, and just head out. I didn't know I'd be delving this deep into modifying the car. But I think that it's a great car for people who just want to get out, go camping, explore a little bit, maybe do a beach run. You know, maybe a beach run is the most adventurous thing you do. Maybe. This is still a perfect car to do that in. Um, I've never had overheating issues on the sand. I've never had any issues with the sand. Um, obviously, don't go splashing at 100 kilometers through salt water because it splashes up into stupid places where water shouldn't be, let alone salt water. But, like I said, you know, these are a great car for people who just want to get out, go, go out to the dam, basic four-wheel drive trails, and scream up the beach, not even modified. So, they're a great car for, for that. Beginners, people who want to test the waters with the four-wheel drive industry, maybe you want to keep your car stock, maybe you don't know. Maybe you want to you know, dip your feet in, maybe buy a couple little parts for it here and there and see if you really like the car, or see if you even really like four-wheel driving in the entire industry. Um, these are a cheap car to do that. Like I said, they're cheap to buy. So if you're going to buy a four-wheel drive dual cab, uh, period, these are a good one to test the waters in because they don't cost so much. And, you know, with the money you save from that, you can buy a couple of upgrades if you want. Or you, or you can just pocket the money that you've saved. Like, it's win-win. The reality is, these are an IFS dual cab ute with 98 kilowatts from factory. If you're expecting a race car, you're not going to get one. If you're expecting a 4.5 litre twin turbo V8, you're not going to get one. Um, these are a light sports utility. They are great for the price. They are great for what you get. And they will do what most people need them to do. And that's the end of the video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for, this is probably, this has droned on a lot longer than what I wanted it to. So if you've actually made it to the end of this video, thank you, congratulations, uh, treat yourself. Uh, this is probably one of my most boring videos ever. I'm just sitting in front of a car talking. Uh, it's everything I've tried not to do, which is make my videos interesting. Um, but thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you like the video. If I've missed something and I get the sinking feeling I really have, chuck it in the comments below. I try my best to stay up to date with what's, being, what's happening down there in the comments section. Um, I don't always get notifications, which is weird, but Chuck it in the comment section below. I'll try and get to it if I've missed a question that you have or reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook or anything. Uh, I try to be as responsive as I can. So, like I said, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, hit the bell button. You get a notification every time I post a video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.